In this video, we are going to discuss sleep cycles. So we have one main, like big, broad uh, circadian rhythm cycle, and this is with the light and dark cycles of the day. So a good way to think about this is when the sun starts going down and it starts getting dark out, that triggers hormones to release in our brain, and we get some uh, some pineal hormone, some melatonin, serotonin is somehow involved, although I don't think that follows the sleep light cycles. Uh, how these hormones function is a little bit above my knowledge at this point, but I do know that as the sun starts going down, more melatonin is produced, and so um, that tends to make us drowsy. And it's really interesting in nocturnal animals, it's the opposite. So nocturnal animals go to bed when it gets light out, and so for them, when it starts getting light out, that triggers the melatonin. So no matter if you're nocturnal or not nocturnal, uh, melatonin tends to make you drowsy. And so nowadays we live indoors and we don't really have the natural pressure of the sun cycles. We don't really live by them anymore. So we need to learn how to control these because with the screens emitting blue light, that really impacts our melatonin release, which then impacts our sleep. You can check out my sleep hygiene video and that'll tell you how you can learn to manage that by like turning lights down and some blue light filters. But we kind of want to uh, be in rhythm with the circadian cycles because that kind of uh, it mediates our hormone response and that makes us sleepy and awake. So, all right, next let's look at the uh, REM cycles and non-REM cycles. So these are the sleep cycles we have right here. So we have awake and then we have our non-REM sleep, which is stage one, two, and three, and then some people will throw REM as stage four down here. The reason why I have REM up top is because the brain waves during REM sleep seem to resemble being awake more than being asleep. So uh, that's why I have REM up there. So when you're going to bed, what happens is you're awake and then you dive right down in and you hit your stage three sleep fairly quickly. Uh, when we're looking at non-REM sleep, a good way to conceptualize what is happening down here is that your body is recovering. So especially down in stage three, we're getting some good testosterone release, some HDH release. Uh, we're getting good protein synthesis as well. So right away when we go to sleep, uh, the first two cycles of sleep are getting some really good deep stage three sleep. And typically in a night, you're going to get three or you know four to five cycles, hopefully. And everybody's slightly different. So you're Cycles might be a little different, but typically they're about 90 minutes a piece. And so right away we're getting that good body recovery. And then what's interesting is the stage three sleep tends to get smaller as we go throughout the night. So as our body tends to recover, it starts to be less, but then our REM sleep actually starts to increase, which is uh, pretty beneficial. So in REM sleep, the way to think about this is it's normally like brain processes that are occurring. And REM sleep stands for rapid eye movement. So your eyes are moving very quickly. And this is also when you dream. So that brings up the question, uh, what is the purpose of dreaming? Or why do we dream? And you do need dreams. Uh, if you are deprived of REM sleep for long enough, for instance, people struggling with alcoholism, they don't get their REM sleep, and they can actually start hallucinating because it's like daytime dreaming. Your brain is forcing you to go into sleep. Uh, they've also deprived mice of sleep, and they tend to die after about three weeks of no sleep. So for whatever reason, the brain needs REM sleep. We don't know exactly why, but there are some theories. Uh, the main theory that I think holds the most water is dreams are teaching uh, or are like dealing with like threat reduction. So basically, a lot of times when you're nervous or you're worried about something, it tends to show up in your dreams. And they've done like studies with people who are suffering from anxiety, and uh, this tends to correlate uh, with what they dream about and then they've also done some children's studies and what children have nightmares about and it tends to be um, like wild animals or strange unknown uh, males and those are probably the two most dangerous things to children and so the theory put forth is that while you're dreaming your brain is running through a bunch of scenarios that you perceive as threatening so that in the daytime uh, that may have created like a memory pattern for you to deal with those situations so um, whatever the real reason is that dream that we dream, uh, it does seem to be very important that we do dream. And as we go throughout the night, this dreaming cycle gets longer and longer. And so this is one of the reasons why um, current evidence suggests that we should be getting one good solid chunk of sleep per night. So what we see we come back up into REM sleep, we go back down into deep sleep, back up into REM, and you might see this little uh, jet going up there where we jump back into the awake phase. 
what's happening here is sometimes be, between cycles when you're in your like light sleep you might wake up and I've had a lot of students who are concerned about that they say they wake up every two hours or every 90 minutes typically that's because you're in between cycles here so you know that could be a sign of insomnia but it could also be that you're just a lighter sleeper and you know if you just fall back right to sleep you'll go straight back down to that stage three sleep so I wouldn't worry about it too much uh, there's some interesting like historical stuff on uh, like like waking up after a couple sleep cycles and then hanging out for a little bit and then going back for some more sleep but current evidence suggests we should try and get all five cycles um, you know over like seven to eight hours of our night so uh, another thing that's happening when we get into that REM sleep your brain is really processing a lot of stuff and one of the things that it's doing is it is learning the motor patterns that you did throughout the day and it's consolidating memories so things that you learned maybe you're studying for a test uh, going to sleep is going to actually ingrain those memories in your brain so we want to get good long sleep for that and then also if we look at like a skill let's say you're learning to play piano or learning how to run a slant route or whatever it is it can be like a physical activity right if we practice like an activity in the day let's say you're learning to play piano and let's just say this is your brain wave those three right there so boom 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 if you practice that throughout the day what they found while you go to sleep in some mice studies is that when you're sleeping your brain is going to repeat that like 10 times faster than you were in real life and basically it's just repetition your brain is just learning those electrical signals to make that movement so uh, really you know sleep is going to make all of us better in multiple aspects and we want to get these full sleep cycles sync up our circadian rhythm so that we can have a healthy sleep schedule overall okay that should be good i'll see you guys in the next video